I've been weaving most of my life. I probably started when I was seven years old. Uh, my grandmother's wove, my great-grandmother's. Grandma would weave, and at that time we were in the old summer kitchen, and I was too little to run the pedals and do the beating by sitting down, so I got the job of winding the shuttles. It's just been a thing that I enjoy, and I don't do it for a living. <laughs> In fact, sometimes I don't weave maybe once every month or so as I get older and busier, I guess you would say. But uh, um, I can still hear Mother running the warp before she would get it onto the loom so she could weave. I can hear that noise in just thinking about it in the old summer kitchen. And things are done mostly the same way. It's old looms, and nothing fancy, nothing modern. The loom is about 150 years old, made for my great-grandmother, Sarah Cox Collins, when she was like 13 years old. And it was a John Reekers in Jackson County that made it. When it traveled by a wagon, it fell off and was broken at one time, and they, he repaired it. And so it has seen, it has woven many miles, I would say, of carpets and rugs. We made our own carpets back then. We would weave three strips of the same length, sew them together, and then like in the spring, we would hang them out over the clothesline one time and beat them with the rug beater. And then maybe then in the fall or whichever, we decided we would take them apart and wash them. Then we would sew them back together and then, of course, we had newspapers under them because I was born in a log house, and that kept the air out, and then our carpet would be sewn together, our strips, and we would put them back on the floor again. So it's a pretty old loom, and I wish it could talk because it would have many stories to tell, many that I never heard growing up, I'm sure. This is made out of heavy wood, as you can tell. This beater, your beater, is very heavy, and therefore, you can beat it, you have more weight to pack the material into it. These old barn looms or these old hand-hewn ones, they uh, were really good for rug weaving. They made them sturdy and uh, it packs the weft in here. Therefore, when you wipe your feet, you're not wiping onto the warp, which would wear out soon. The warp is this, the white string you see. And back there is your warp beam, what it's wound on. These are your heddles, and I hand tie these. Then I got a stretcher, I use that. That keeps your rug from pulling in. You always have a little draw in, but it keeps it more or less the same width. This is your shuttle. Anything you put in there would be called a weft. And there's a lot of different things you can use. I even have my llama wool that I sent to Texas, jute, and I weave rugs out of that. You can even see, like, if it could talk, it's had something tacked on there, probably a pocket for their scissors. And it's got many marks here. But, and people ask me what that is. I have no idea. That was before I got it. My mother, she used to weave for a woolen mill in Seymour. We would cut up our old shirts, our blouses, dresses. Back in those days, you didn't wear a lot of, the ladies didn't wear slacks or jeans hardly. And we would sew them all together. That was we would spend our time in the winter. We didn't have TV or radio. I remember when the electricity came, so that's what we would do, cut rags. And a lot of times, instead of cutting them, we would tear it, if it would tear. You would just cut your width, start it, and then just tear those strips. It's a little faster now when you have bigger strips and you don't have to cut little pieces. And I enjoy it. I do it as a hobby. I can be ever so tired because I live on a farm and I can come in at night and weave and that's very relaxing for me. I'm not too much of a TV watcher. I make rugs for about anybody that wants some. It's really strange when I go to my dentist that they always say, bring rugs, which I do. And my niece went last week with one that I had on order from them. And she sold that, plus I had sent another one and someone bought that, plus a new lady was working there, and now she's going to want me to send her some samples. And I've had them come out of the dentist chair. I didn't know them, but the dentist did. He said, you ought to see the rugs. And they would buy rugs. So a lot of it's just word of mouth, and it's just kind of different 
ways at different times that people get to know about them. And I enjoy helping them all I can. I use what is called a frayless warp. It is not supposed to fray out on the end as quickly when it is washed and you know, and you should always shake them from the side. When you shake them by the end, you snap those fringes. I mean, anything you use won't last forever. It should be tight so that your weft is really packed in there. And then if the end does start to wear off from your fringes, which they probably is the first thing to go, I just cut off some of your weft and pull that out and I re-knot it. And therefore you just have a shorter rug, but it isn't worn out yet. I use what I call a double sleigh. I run two strings together and I have never used colored warp. The way I warp, it, I put on a bunch at the, about 60 yards at the same time and it's, it's a long process to get it ready, possibly four hours. When I'm down here, I say, I have some thoughts of my own. I don't need to hear what to buy, what to wear, where to go, what to eat, how to diet. That's where I do my thinking. The things maybe the years gone by, my childhood. Some happy thoughts, you know, the world's so busy nowadays. And I just enjoy having my time for myself to do my own thinking, my own thoughts.